the 1963 Chevrolet Impella Super Sport coming up next on Monster Hobbies What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again Monster Hobbies model car builders welcome back to another great unboxing and today we're going to look at an old friend of mine the 1963 Chevy Impala Super Sport. Now I was trying to get a big collection of Chevy Impalas going all the way back to the first one in 1958 so this is another one of those golden nuggets that fits right on my shelves right in the 1963 slot. So what we want to do is open up the lid on this great baby and see what's inside. But before we do that, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell, you'll find it down there in the corner somewhere, it's red. And if you do that, every time I open up another model kit, you will be among the first people to know that that happened, because you'll get the notification in your YouTube feed. That'll be really good. So without further ado, let's go down and open up the lid on our 1963 Chevy Impala. Suddenly it's 1963 again, and today we are going to examine the AMT Ertl 1963 Chevrolet Impala SS. And as I said at the outset, this is again one of those great model kits where I'm trying to collect all the Impalas, and this is one in my series. So this kit came out in let's see, 1996. It's a reissue from an earlier kit, of course, but the pictures are nice. Highly detailed model kit, aluminum hubcaps, detailed interior, and here's the view from the rear. Of course, hubcaps are chrome plated in the kit, but if you have some paint that dulls it out, they will look aluminum. Of course, the side of the box looks like the top of the box. And now we get back into here. So they give you some specifications in here because they're so nice. Uh, model kit specifications for the Chevrolet Impala SS. The type is a front engine rear wheel drive, two door hard top. Engine is the 409 cubic inch with the W head V8. 409, transmission four speed manual. Wheels are standard SS wheel covers, super sport. There are optional five-spoke mag wheels in here. Exterior options are full custom body accessories, including asymmetrical taillight pod, twin scoops, rolled pan, choice of two custom grills, side pipes, and a trophy. Interior options, tools, custom steering wheel, custom front bucket seats, roll bar, TV, record player with rear speaker boxes, and a rabbit. Parts over 100. Now when they originally made this kit, like I'm not talking about back in the 90s here, but I mean like really early, I do believe George Barris, Gene Winfield, and some of the many other customizers that worked with the AMT cat team, cats, the cats from AMT, they contributed individual bits to this thing from their own customs that we were doing at the time. So moving the box lid out of the way, I'm gonna grab the instructions and move our parts here. Okay, let's open this thing up. So of course, you get the nice picture of the SS up there. And uh, let's zoom this back. It is back. Okay, cool. Carefully study and understand the entire instruction sheet. And on and on. Proceed to test fit parts. And it gives you all the stuff about using sandpapers and seam lines and all the rest. The stuff you should read if you are a serious model builder read and apply. Okay, and here's our engine block. As you can see, it's a little more simplistic. The uh, intake manifold and cylinder head and all that is one piece. It's almost like a snap together in a lot of ways, but this kit would make a good slot car. So this engine, of course, would be easy to do. And note, it's got the holes in the side of the engine block for the metal axle to go all the way through. Of course, you get your air cleaner, your belts, and your fan on there. Now here's your wheel options, the stock front wheel and back wheels, and the custom front and back wheels. Interesting to note that the metal axle goes through the actual front wheel, and then at the back it goes through the back part of the wheel, and the front is a hubcap. Or, however you want to put that. <laughs> okay, 
Now we get back into the interior bucket. If you remember from our Pontiac from last week, I said that it had separate molded panels. Well, this is the 60s type, 70s type interior where it is one solid bucket with the sides molded in. You just drop in the seat, seat belt, and dashboard and steering wheel and the shifter in there. Or these cool custom seats with the racing seat belt shoulder harnesses. And speaking of racing, you can also add in a roll bar. So as you can tell, there are a lot of accessories and options to the interior here. Now here's the cool parts, and I know I've used the TV in another model, <laughs> and the record player, but you get a trophy stand, a, an old TV, some tools, a record player, you can remove the top on there, the speakers for the record player, and the mascot, which is your white rabbit. One pill makes you... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so the body interior assembly, once you get your interior together, of course the interior tub, the windows, you can always cut this bar out of here to separate them, the body and the hood, and then it tells you how to paint your taillights. And the shaded area is metallic silver, it was an aluminum panel in there. So now you can see the undercarriage here, oh, I was wrong, the front engine does not, the axles do not go through, that's why it mounts on the back there. There's these two pins that pop in, and you glue Carefully glue them. Don't glue your wheels to the wheel skirt, fender skirts. Uh, also, there is this simulated engine here that you can glue in underneath. It says if desired, but we all know in the slot car world what that means. This is the engine plug that goes in here so that you can have your electric motor and stuff back there. And when you flip the car over, it looks like it's got a V8 without having that V8 in the way of your and your slot car parts. So now here's the stock version. You just put the front and rear bumper in. Notice that it's got pins in here and holes in that, so you could also screw mount this for your slot car guys. Note, the license plate decals can be used if the engraved 1963 is removed from the front and rear bumpers. Okay, so now we get into the custom, just regular custom. Now, there's a hood scoop, there's a racing fuel cap on there, there's exhaust dumps going into lake pipes, if you want the lake pipes or just use the exhaust dumps. There is a front roll pan with some bumperettes and driving lights, and of course custom wire mesh grill going on in there. Then you get a blanked out rear bumper and bumperettes. Then we have the dun -dun -dun Advanced Custom. And this is probably where Barris and Winfield and those guys really poured on the juice back in the day for this model. So you get a custom grill, which looks very much like a 64 Mercury Marauder. And then adding on these custom headlight bezels and whatnot, there's a front balance. There's a different type of hood scoop, lake pipes, and then ground effects fender skirts. Or, I guess they're not fender skirts, but it gives it more of a, like a pointed rocket end. And then here we've got our asymmetrical rear end. You put one taillight in there, and then you've got the other four in here on this side. And then there's a wire mesh panel that pops in underneath. Or version B is to use exhaust tips through there. Cut out the headlight so you got one, one, and the two exhaust which would twist and go underneath the car in through there. Then there's a rear brakes cooling scoop on your hood and the asymmetrical rear bumper. So very cool, very many options, even though the model is rather basic slot car kind of promo date type deal. So now without further ado, let's actually look at the kit parts. All right, so here's our review of the 63 Impala. Again, another one of the Impalas in my collection. Now, the body here is really nice. I've got the interior and the chassis and everything all put together. I was starting to work on this kit, so you'll have to bear with me. But again, you can see the uh, hardtop convertible style, just like on the 62 Pontiacs. I do believe GM carried this type of roof all the way up to about 1964. Not too sure about 65, though. The uh, hood has a nice fit on here, as you can see. Very simplistic. I do believe this kit came out in 63 as one of the AMT annuals. 
you can see some nice ribbing and a little bit of the uh, fire retardant mat underneath here. So quite good detail. Of course you get the uh, Chevrolet script right across the hood there. Looking at the body itself, you can see the words Impala on this piece of side trim, as well as the Impala logo. And across the rear, you get the Chevrolet and the little V. Did any of you guys actually own one of these for real? Write it in the comments below, let me know. Gas filler cap on the driver's side. And nice V8 emblem there. Saying that it has the 409 cubic inch in it. And as well as the little chrome side blocks there. Now looking at the chassis underneath, this is just a one punch. So everything is molded in place. You get these great big holes under here for the metal axle. Those would be in the stock height location. It doesn't have the uh, little lowering blocks like some of the other kits in this series did. So now we can pop this out of here. For you slot car guys, there's a pin, nice set of pins there, which can be cut off and this drilled through wherever they are, and you can screw mount this to the body. There you can see the indentations. So again, just a one punch, nothing exciting on this side. The uh, engine bay looks quite nice. There is some detail in there, so not too bad. Now we can shell out the interior tub. As you can see, most of it is molded in place. It does have the separate bucket seats and separate dash. Uh, there is some good detail up here, but the problem with molding a bucket is that your winders end up being sort of flat and not very nice looking. And so with the top of the body again, there is not too much going on on the inside. There are two holes here for mounting your mirrors and um, some spotlights or something else. And again, the radiator has a shroud there, but those are your two pins for mounting to a NASCAR type, slot car type chassis, whatever you want to do there. Now, as I mentioned in the video here, I have started to build this. I've got the engine block together, the 409, with that transmission sticking off the back. You can see the separate exhaust manifolds. If I turn it this way, you can note the Chevy bow tie on the uh, valve covers. But I mean, look at the carburetor, there's no detail. Just the air cleaner pops on top, very basic. And it's got the uh, the four spark plugs in there. Starter motor molded to the oil pan. The, uh, of course, your uh, fuel pump and timing chain cover are just molded to the motor. So a bit of filler in there would make a nice difference. Although it could get covered by the fan belt. This pin is where it's going to mount on the transmission and a pin up front. So mounting on the frame down like that. So now we have our seats here, the tops and bottoms, nice molding on them. And then this piece, now this is, if you wanted to do a slot car and you've got all your steering mechanism and stuff up front here, you can drop in this fake motor. Or if you just want a hood down display model, there's a uh, pre-built sort of molded in engine for underneath there. Next up we have the interior components. We've got the front two bucket seats that don't have a headrest. The reason why they don't have a headrest is because that body style, GM had an idea that if you looked through the window you wouldn't see a seat. So it was just a styling feature but ended up being kind of unsafe in accidents because of course you get whiplash. <laughs> However, it's the 60s they didn't quite fully know a lot about that type of stuff or how to prevent it, I guess. Now here we have the Chevy steering wheel, which seems true to the era. The horn ring underneath. And then, last but not least, we have our Impala dashboard. And it's got the long speedometer, instead of the round style. And uh, very well done. 
The next part tree I have is pretty small. This is the air cleaner, the fan, and the pulleys for the fan. There is no alternator bracket down here. But as you can see, there is a lot of flash. Keep in mind that this kit came out in 63 and has been through the molds many, many times. And now with this series of kits, we get to the real stars of the show, which are the custom components, because there isn't too much in the kit for the normal stuff. So here we've got a whole bunch of tools. We've got some wrenches, pair of pliers, monkey wrench, screwdriver, hammer, and I do believe these are paddles for doing lead work back in the old bodywork days, before Bondo. <laughs> okay, well, Bondo was in the 50s, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, before Bondo was widely used, let's put it that way. So these are for the asymmetrical rear end. This is the three tail lights, as in the instructions, and this is the wire mesh version of this three tail light insert. There's the wire mesh long grill there. These are for the front wheels, the axles, and this is the asymmetrical rear bumper part. Now we have more of the car components for the body. This is our rolled pan for the rear bumper, or the front bumper maybe. These are those um, side rear, what do they call them, <laughs> go on the body. And this is our asymmetrical rear end. So you've got your one rear tail light here, and then the three would go in here with your, your uh, wire mesh or your grill type inserts. And for our final piece of gray sprue, now there are some pieces missing because I used them on something else, like the television and the record player. But this is your seat belts. These are your seat belts, I should say. The rear uh, roll pan, your um, safety harness for your race car. These pieces here are part of the roll cage. There you got your your uh, steering wheel. These are the headrests that mount inside in the roof. There's your rabbit. This is for your cross flag stand. Um, not sure what these are. <laughs> have to look it up. And then your two different hood and trunk scoops. Next up we have all the chrome components and this again is another one of the stars of the kit because of all the great customizing features. So this sort of grill is like your uh, Mercury Park Lane type of grill from uh, the 60s. So there's your side lake pipes. These are additional those, so you can have quad headlights. We've got a wire mesh grill up here. We've got some Keystone mag wheels, and the thing that wants to fall over. Knockoffs here. These are your bumperettes and whatnot. Then you've got your stock wheels there. These are all the wheel backs and the front and rear bumpers with the grill, the stock ones with 1963 in there. Now let's have a look at these close up. There we go. You can see the nice detail of that grill for the stock grill. And then down here we've got the two custom chrome grills. There's our Keystone Mag wheels. And what else is cool? How about the stock wheels? And if you flip this over, of course, you see the, uh, the way the wheels work. So these two are for the front, for those gigantic pins. And these two are for the back. So next up, we have our clear components. And of course, we've got our windshield and rear glass. And there is a lot of flash on this. And usually what I'll do is I'll saw it off here and here and here and here and then glue it into the car separately. The red tail lights, now these are just for the asymmetrical stuff. So there's the one that goes in the center of the grill or the back and then the three that go along the asymmetrical side. Then here we have our four headlight covers for the uh, custom stuff as well as the Lucas covers up there. Next up we have our Firestone tires. These are the regular skinnies that have been included in a lot of the MT kits going right back to the 1932 Ford and whatnot. They do have a nice pie plate around the outside. You can see the Firestone just above my thumb there. And the tread is just basically straight lines, no wavy lines or anything. 
here's our decal sheet which just includes three license plates Michigan 409 SS not sure where this is it just says 60, 1963 up top so 93 LO215 and the Utah 63 Rabbit now one thing that is missing in this model kit which is pretty crucial is a firewall and um, I don't know why AMT didn't include it with the 63, but this one is from the 64 Chevy. And with a little modification, it can fit into that 50 or 63 Chevy Impala body. But uh, again, yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure why it wasn't included. So this one came from my parts box. And uh, you might be lucky to find one somewhere out there in internet land in somebody else's part box. And that completes our review of the AMT Ertl 1963 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport. And wasn't that a great review? And now you know what's in the box. So if you're looking for this thing and you come across it at a flea market or something, or round two re-releases it as a brand new kit. Yeah, which of course it isn't. But anyway, brand new kit, you can find it and you will know ahead of time from watching this great video what's in the box if you want it or not it's up to you so speaking of things don't forget to like subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family pound that notification bell so that every time I make another video next week is gonna be a cool one you will be the first to know about it and until next time keep chasing the Impala